If you are an Australian millennial, then chances are you grew up with these guys. Jade and Ryan were the hosts of Channel 10's morning programming for children, Cheese TV. In between the often wildly inappropriate skits and segments from the teenage hosts, Cheese TV would air cartoon episodes, primarily Japanese anime. I remember the golden age of Cheese TV. It was Sailor Moon at 7am, followed by Pokemon at 7.30, and then Dragon Ball Z at 8 o'clock. I had to leave for school during Dragon Ball Z, so I actually recorded it onto a VHS tape. This exact one, actually. You can probably tell that I was very much into Pokemon at the time. Who wasn't? Still am, really. Uh, that says, gotta catch them all, Pokemon, Pokemon Go, uh, which is an error I am deeply ashamed of now. And this says, do not tape over any Pokemon tapes, uh, which I did check and mum has flagrantly disregarded as it is now full of house reruns. My morning routine was actually to record Pokemon while I was watching it and getting ready for school and leave it running for Dragon Ball Z. That way when I got home, I would cook my Magi Two Minute Noodles, rewatch Pokemon and then catch up on Dragon Ball Z. Because you couldn't not watch Cheese TV lest you miss out on the hottest lunchtime schoolyard topics of the day and be late to all the coolest new trends, like Beyblades. Remember Beyblades? They were sick. The sheer pervasiveness of Cheese TV as a morning ritual for Australian 90s kids means that anime has quite firmly rooted itself into the lives of many Aussie millennials. I imagine it holds a very similar place in our hearts as Toonami does for Americans. You can especially see how deeply entrenched anime is in modern popular culture in the relationship it has with hip-hop. Many rappers litter their songs with references to anime and adopt the visual style for their own aesthetics. This, of course, is related to anime's popularity within black communities. In his book The Tao of Wu, Riza of the Wu-Tang Clan wrote that Dragon Ball Z represents the journey of the black man in America. Open Mike Eagle is someone for whom anime has struck a deep chord. In an interview with The Ringer, Mike talks about how anime particularly resonates for young black Americans through a fantasy of power. The characters start out really weak, and over time they get really strong and they end up able to kick anybody's ass in the universe. I think there's always been some resonance in communities that I've grown up around. Following his 2017 album, Brick Body Kids Still Daydream, Open Mike set out to make an album centered on the role that anime power fantasies have in black communities. But that was until 2019, when Mike experienced what he calls the worst year of his entire life. In the space of just 12 months, Mike's TV show The New Negroes was cancelled, his rap collective and record label Hellfire Club disbanded, and his marriage of 14 years came to an end. While seeing his therapist, Mike realized that his music can be a tool to help him process all of these traumatic life events. In October of that year, he wrote a song exploring each of these arcs concluding in his life. Desperately rapping over the sparsest of deflated, minimal beats, each verse ends with an exasperated sigh of a chorus. It's October and I'm tired. One year later, in October of 2020, the song appeared on Open Mike Eagle's album, Anime, Trauma and Divorce, speaking into an exhausting year for all of us, plagued by social unrest, climate crisis, and a literal plague. As a record built from the ashes of the original anime power fantasy concept, Open Mike reflects his life experiences through the lens of the media he consumes. The three topics in the album's title form the basis of the conversation that Open Mike has with the listener throughout the album, jumping straight into the heavy stuff on Opener Death Parade. Should have been cool, but dude got screwed up, his shit got burned up, so he fucked her up, and she turned big. I got chewed up, this shit fucked me up, so I'ma fuck you up. Mike immediately outlines the way that abuse can lead to cycles of trauma, in which people hurt other people because they too were hurt by other people. This is also reflected in the vague and cyclical structure of the song. There is no real clear chorus or verse to the song, but the stanzas repeat in a circular fashion that could seemingly continue forever. Within this cycle, 
Mike explains how trauma caused his marriage to fall apart. Couples rely on each other for emotional support. So when one trips, the other can catch their fall. However, when you both trip, it's easy to accidentally fall on top of each other in the wrong way, and a once supportive hand can put pressure on a sensitive area of the relationship, causing severe injury or even breakage. Open Mic attributes that fall to a seemingly innocuous moment in any relationship. Watching television. Throughout the album, Mike consistently uses his sense of humour to help process his trauma. Whether he's listing the ways he's been a head ass, local head ass, local head ass, old anti social head ass, indie head ass, bitty head ass, walking like that with grimly head ass, or trying various self care fads in order to start looking after himself better. What the fuck is self care? A lot of the ideas, these premises, they came from like these really vulnerable places. So if I say something heavy in a way that makes me chuckle, then I, it, feel, it makes me feel better about saying it. But the Black Mirror episode is not just a self-deprecating joke to make him feel a little more okay about things. In it, Mike recognises the power that media has to speak into our lives. Had a good home and we had good trust. Saw a Black Mirror and it looked like us. Mike brings up the irony of a Netflix series about the dangers of modern technology contributing to the breakdown of his marriage. Happy home, go to hell cause the tech shit. Well my shit went to hell cause of Netflix. It wasn't like we called it quits that night, Open Mike told the New York Times. But we were watching this episode with this couple in it, and I don't think we were able to come back from that. It's through the media which Open Mike consumes that he is able to better understand his own circumstances. On the track Sweatpants Spider-Man, Mike likens his newly single self to the middle-aged, washed-up Peter Parker who mentors Miles Morales in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse as he tries to make positive changes and establish what his post-divorce life looks like. Start studying Kendrick, start dressing like Hendrix, old chapter just ended, I'm looking over my spending. But the primary medium that Mike finds himself in is anime, particularly in how it often uses characters' personal trauma to set events into motion and explore the show's themes. On the song Aces Bop, Mike relates himself to two specific characters. Have Joe Star, have Shinji to it again. One of these is Shinji Ikari from Neon Genesis Evangelion, who Mike sees as someone whose trauma has warped the way he perceives the world, and who is able to reframe that thanks to the relationships he builds. The other is the Joe Star family from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, each of whom Mike views as exhibiting a different aspect of heroism. Mike elaborates on this in the track I'm a Joe Star, in which he takes claim of the family name and invents a new season where he's the main character. In this chapter, Jojo is African. And it's me, Mike Eagle, I'm the protagonist. By imagining himself as the protagonist in an anime, Mike taps into the often obscene power that these characters possess. He is able to frame his own life as a narrative arc, and gives himself agency over its outcome. He is the main character of his life, who has the strength, both physically and of character, to overcome the trials he faces and shape his own story. And this is something I personally relate to as well. A few years ago, I went through my own somewhat traumatic experience. Nothing major or significantly life-changing or anything like that, but it was enough to send me into a tailspin of depression and anxiety for a few months. During this time, I found it difficult to achieve much of anything at all. So instead, I turned to binge-watching a show which I had loved in my childhood, an anime that aired on Cheese TV on Friday mornings called Card Captors. I was always made to feel ashamed of liking Card Captors, 
mercilessly mocked by my male friends for how quote-unquote girly it is. But there was just something about the urban magic realism of the world, about Sakura's new powers and outfits every episode, which just captured my imagination. I hadn't watched Cardcaptors in almost 20 years, but it was the one comfort I turned to in this time of struggle. I found a strange resonance in this show about a 10-year-old schoolgirl who was tasked with a responsibility well beyond her age and abilities. Sakura is someone who is easily scared and ill-prepared, but always manages to find a way to save the day through sheer optimism, determination, and kindness. In a way, I kind of related to Sakura and wanted to emulate her response to the adversities she faced. To be honest, I kind of only realised all this as I was writing the script for this video. I think in the same way that music is a form of therapeutic care for Open Mic Eagle, so too is making these videos for myself. The single biggest value of pop culture is that it's made by humans. We are able to see our own lives represented in the stories we consume, and ourselves reflected in their fictional characters, because they are created by real people with real human struggles. Pop culture, whether it's anime, or music, or online video, can be a form of self-care. A therapeutic tool which can help us understand our own story and process our own traumas. You just have to be willing to see yourself as the main character of your own story. As Open Mike Eagle puts it, Just put me on that TV screen cause pop culture's forever. 